Legend of Mishapikotin by Claude Dablon, read by Frank Blissett. Upon entering Lake Superior by its mouth, where it empties into the Sioux, the first place met where copper is found in abundance is an island distant forty or fifty leagues and situated toward the north, opposite a spot called Missipicoatung. The savages say that it is a floating island, which is sometimes far off, sometimes near, according to the winds that push it and drive it in all directions. They add that a long time ago four savages came thither by chance, having lost their way in the fog by which that island is almost always surrounded. It was in the times before they had yet had any commerce with the French, and when they did not use kettles or hatchets. These men, then, wishing to prepare themselves something to eat, adopted their usual method. Taking some stones that they found at the water's edge, they heated them red-hot, and threw them into a bark dish filled with water, to make it boil, and by this device to cook their meat. While selecting these stones, they found that they were almost all pieces of copper. Accordingly, they made use of some of them, and, after taking their repast, resolved to embark as soon as possible, fearing the lynxes and hares, which are as large as dogs in that region, which were coming to eat up their provisions and even their canoe. Before setting out, they loaded themselves with a good many of these stones, large and small, and even with some slabs of copper. But they had not gone far from the shore when a powerful voice made itself heard to their ears, calling in great wrath, Who are those robbers carrying off from me my children's cradles and playthings? The copper slabs are the cradles, because among the savages these are made of only one or two boards joined together, on which they put their children to bed. And those little pieces of copper that they were carrying off are the toys and playthings of the savage children, who play together with little stones. That voice astonished them greatly, as they knew not whose it was. Some say that it was thunder, because there are many storms there, and others that it was a certain spirit whom they called Missibizi, who passes among these people for the god of the waters, as Neptune did among the pagans. Others say it came from Memogaviziwiz. These are, they say, marine people, somewhat like the fabulous Tritons or the Sirens, who always live in the water and have long hair reaching to the waist. One of our savages told us he had seen one of them in the water, according to what he imagined. However this may be, that astounding voice inspired such terror in our travellers' souls that one of the four died before reaching land. A short time afterward a second was taken off, and then the third, so that only one was left, who, after returning to his country and relating all that had happened, died very soon afterward. That was The Legend of Michipicotin by Claude Dablon, read by Frank Blissett.